Hey everyone, I'm Jadka and uh, some of you asked me on Twitter if um, the class that I'm running next week is an online class and if they could participate. Unfortunately, it's an offline class, so I decided to make my first YouTube video and share how um, we create the or how we we will create the T-Rex with the Pixel Graphic Draw program. So for our Pixel Graphic Draw program, at first I need a list in which I want to share uh, or store the graphics. For that I'm going to create a variable which I call graphic. This graphic variable is going to be a list. So at first I need to initialize the list by setting the variable to an empty list. So here's my graphic variable and here I'm going to share and store the values later. The next thing is um, whenever I press the space key, I want to reset everything. So my graphics variable, also the position of my sprite and the st status of the stage. So whenever space is pressed, I'm going to reset everything to the center and clear everything I have drawn before. Right now nothing happens because we didn't do anything yet. In the next step, we also uh, want to move the turtle around. So we're going to create four scripts with which we can move the turtle with the arrow keys. So the down arrow key, or let's do the left first. Left arrow key will move the sprite to the left in a given amount of step. Um, so we're going to look left, point in direction, left, and uh, then we're going to move and we don't always want to move 10 steps because we want to change the size of our thingy later. So we make another variable, which we call, for example, steps. And uh, we set the steps variable. Let's do something like 30 at the beginning. And then we always want to move whatever steps is. Then we can copy the script for the other arrow keys. So we want the right arrow point in direction. Ah, this was not left. Sorry. Point in direction left, right arrow, point in direction right. Then I'm duplicating it again for the up arrow, which should point in to position uh, in direction zero. And the last one is the down arrow which should make your sprite point in direction down and let it move steps. So now I can use the keys to move my sprite around. So clicking um, twice in each direction will give me a square in size 60. To reset, to reset everything, um, I can click space. Right now, we're not saving anything in the graphics variable because we did not yet define when and what to save. So for that, I, we want to create a script that adds stuff to our graphics, empty graphics list. We're going to do that with a broadcast. So I will add a broadcast after each movement step. Let's call the message update. Um, and we also add that to every script. So we're updating our variable or graphics variable after each step we've made. <clears throat> and uh, now we of course need a script that receives that message. So whenever update is received, we want to add the important information that we need to recreate the drawing later to our graphic list. So we're going to use the add block to add that stuff. And the important information that we want to add to the graphic variable is a list that contains the direction in which the turtle is facing at that point and whether its pen is up or down so that we also can recreate it later if we want to not stitch some parts of our graphic. So we drag the direction in here and the information whether the pen is up or down, which we can do with that predicate, reports true when the pen is down, which is right now, and when I put the pen up, it reports false. Okay, so now let me put the pen down again. Let's start with the space and create another graphic. This time let's try a rectangle. 
Now you see I, I clicked eight times and I got eight um, entries in my list that all, so I clicked four times down, so I have 180, 180, 180, uh, three times. That's the direction which we're facing um, when we store the value. Then I pressed right, so here it changed to 90 and the pen was down all the time, so every entry has a true as its second item. Okay. So now we always have true because we couldn't, we didn't yet define a way um, to change the status of the pen. So let's make two more scripts also with keys. So for example, let's do the down key for D, D for down, um, to put the pen down. And let's duplicate that and use the U key for up to put the pen up. If you have like blocks that are closely related to the one that you have, you can just right click and press relabel to get the other versions of it. So in this case, I want to switch to pen up. Again, let's try our new drawing and reset my list. And now I want to make a square, but at the end, I don't want to have the pen down. So I use the U key and close my square. And now you can see that uh, it's not stitching or it's not drawing in that part. This, this is the red lines is not, are not going to be stitched later on. And um, also in my graphics variable here, you can see that I got a false in the last entry when I put the pen up. So now as a next step is what if I've drawn something and I don't like it. So I did that but I actually wanted to do a square just with size 30. So now I moved 60s. What I need to do for that is I need to remove the last part of my, or the last element of my graphics variable. That's pretty easy to do. We just create another script with the R key, for example, R for remove. And um, first of all, again, we're going to reset everything then we're going to delete the last item of our graphics variable. Delete item last of graphic. And then we want to, yeah, let's, let's just try that. So now I press R, my, let me do something bigger. So now um, I have a variable or list with length five. If I press R now, I remove the last item and delete everything. So everything I've drawn on the stage. To now go on, I would need my image back. So I know at which position I was when I finished and, and how much steps I need to, I don't know, close my rectangle or something. So we want to redraw everything that we've, that is in this list up to the point that we just delete. So, we're going to use the for each block for that. The for each block is an additional block that you can import from the tools library. To get to the tools library, click on the file menu, press import tools, and then wait until the blocks are loaded. Like any other custom block, the blocks from the tool library um, appear at the end of each palette. So in this case, we're going to use the for each block. It works like that, that you add an input in here. This is going to be a list or this has to be a list. We have a list here, the graphics variable. And then the block takes each item of the graphics variable and does whatever is indicated in that C-shaped slot with that item. So in this case, for example, we want to check whether the item two of each item is pen down or pen up, or is it true or false, and then we want to put the pen down or up respectively. So first thing is an if statement. If the item two of our item that we just have here is true, so we can just use if item two of item, this gives me if item two, uh, if true, do that, if false, do that. So if it's true, we want to put the pen down. If it's false, we want to put the pen up. Okay, so now 
we know whether to put the pen up or down, but still we didn't walk. For that, we can use the first information in here. Um, and then we can point in the direction of the first item, which is the direction that we stored before. So here we're going to say point direction item one of the item. And then of course we have to move. For that we can use the move block because we're already looking into the right direction and we move the number of steps that is stored in the steps value. So now when I press the R key, or let's start that again. Okay, we try to draw something. Oops, that was too much. So I want to remove the last part. I press the R key and it draws everything up to that part, just except the last part because we just deleted it. The thing is, you see that when I do a lot of them and press R, it takes quite a while to redraw that. So we want to have that right away so we can start drawing again right away. We can use the warp block for that. So we just wrap the warp block around our for each. The warp block does everything inside its C-shaped slot in one step. So it's way faster. If I press remove or R now, you see that I get the image right away. Okay, that's basically it. Um, I created another script um, in which I change the um, in which I can change the settings for the embroidery patterns. Um, you could also split that up with the remove script so you have, can have a remove script and a redraw script separately but I'm going to do another script um, for that so I will just duplicate that. Let's use the S key. I used that in my project and if I forgot which word I used that made sense for S anyway. Um, and then of course we don't want to delete the last part this can stay the same, but now we want to add um, some embroidery patterns or stitching ways. Um, so for example, we could say whenever the pen is down, we want to use the cross stitch. Whenever the pen is up, we want to use the running stitch. So uh, it, we don't have to cut out as many threads as uh, in the cross stitch. Um, and then we can just uh, press S to redraw everything. We can also check uh, other, other stitching patterns. So if I'd rather have the tatami stitch, um, I could just uh, press, let's say, I could just select 20 here and then I can press S again. It doesn't matter that I still have the cross stitch in here because it's just overwritten by the tatami. I press S now. Oh, that's a bit big. Let's maybe just try five. Um, I can redraw my stuff with different um, stitching patterns. Okay, finally let's try something a little more beautiful than that and a little more real than that. Um, so I'm going to reset it. Maybe let's try a butterfly. Also, maybe let's start with something smaller here though, so I can see my whole drawing. Okay, my first part of the butterfly will be the antenna. They look like that. Of course, my butterfly has two of it. And then I can draw the body. And then I can draw the wings. So they look like that on all butterflies. Um, So now I have to see that I get the same, how, how much did I move here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, this looks about right. And again, if I made a mistake, oops, that was way too far. I can just remove the last one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four parts of my drawing. and can uh, create my pixely graphic. And again, um, pressing S will now change the stitching type that is used. So for example, the cross stitch here, the 10 might be a little bit big. Um, 
let's try put five again. And the cool thing, um, using the steps here, I can also change or adjust the size of my image later on. So if I say I want to increase the steps to 40 now, I will just step the step to 40. And as I use that um, as a reference here everywhere, I can just press S now and I get my butterfly in way bigger. So I can also use that to change the size of my drawing later on, which is pretty cool because yeah, these stitching frames, uh, I have issues creating patterns in the right size for stitching frames that I have. Okay, I hope you liked the video and um, if you have any questions or if you want to share your embroidered um, graphic, feel free to. Thanks for watching and bye.